Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle channel. Our guest today is someone who missed three quarters of 2023. He come back with a vengeance near the end. He has got a massive 2024 planned. He is the absolute maverick. He is Tommy Kyle. Welcome to the show, Tommy. How are you? Not bad, man. Thank you. How are you? How are you doing? It's good. It is very, very good. Although it's still a bit cold in the UK currently, uh, but we'll, we'll get out of that, I'm sure. Um, the uh, the ice on the car is just uh, defroze, or shall we say, defrosted. Uh, but Tommy, thanks so much for coming on. Um, you've got an important match coming up at the weekend, actually, Sacrifice Pro Wrestling against a big fan of this channel, Arthur Scoro. But how's you know you've had a match a couple of weeks ago against a, 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 a good chap called Murdoch. How was the uh, how's twenty twenty four kicked off? Bear it only been one match so far. Yeah, it seems okay. Yeah, I got got the win in the uh, the first match back, so can't really say better than that. Uh, feeling all good, feeling fine, feeling ready to go. So, yeah, can't complain. Excellent stuff. And obviously, as I say, sacrifice at the weekend against Arthur Scurry. What are you expecting from him? He's very sort of Jekyll and Hyde. You either get one of two sides of this chap, from what I hear. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what he's like, to be fair, at sacrifice. I haven't seen, I've only known he's just started p- appearing there recently. Mm. Um, I've heard that he's not quite the same as he is in maybe other promotions. It's maybe he's like quite on the... Uh, the naughty side, so to speak, <laughs> but uh, but I've had a big hand in training him, so I think I'll know most of his stuff regardless of what he does. So I'm not too worried. No, I, I guess you shouldn't be be training. But let, let's go back to, to 2023. Now, if, if, if I'm wrong, the injury was that at the back end of 22. The uh, uh, no, uh, for start of 23. Start of 23. That's fine. And you you got your injury. Um, when you get injured, and I know it sounds stupid, do you instantly know that it's bad, or do you sometimes think it's one of those ones that you can potentially say impact one or something? Or did you instantly know this is serious? Um, I mean, when you're when it actually happened to me, mm. uh, your first instinct, I guess, because all the adrenaline's going through you, is like, oh, I have, you know, I felt a, a pop or uh, something. That's not good. Better try and, you know, uh, pull the pulling the curtain back a little bit. Better try and finish the match or. Um, try and get out of the way so then I tried to stand up and then I realized I was like oh that's really not good um because I physically couldn't stand and then you, I think depending on the injury you then go into panic slash shock um mm-hmm. which I think I was going into but luckily medics were on site and they gave me gas and air very quickly so I think I kind of surpassed that bit and then when I came to at the back it was uh uh realized that my leg was broken I was going to be out a while Wow, that's a you know when you sort of wake up from the, the gas and air and you, and you get out of the back and you know then you obviously know that it is serious. How does it do it mentally when you're kind of just taken away from you something that you really want to do and you're actually gaining a lot of momentum as well quite early on in 2023? How did that feel initially for you? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think like it was obviously sad. Hmm. Uh, it, it's easier to say it in hindsight now that I'm that I'm back and everything, and now that everything is okay. Um, I think at the time it was like, okay, well, I I like to not try and see the worst and the negatives of things. I just try and see, okay, this is this is what's happened, and how are we going to to fix it or deal with it? So I realized, okay, cool, my I'm gonna have to have surgery, and I'm gonna be out for a while. Um, I asked the doctors and other doctors. Uh, will I wrestle again? Or do you think I'll wrestle? Do you, what do you think the turnaround time? And they said I would. So, and a lot of people times they go like, oh, you know, a lot of times they say, no, you won't wrestle again. And people have come back and wrestled again. So for them to say, yes, you will. I was like, okay, well, for them to say that I'm in, I'm in fairly good mindset, then I just need to really focus on rehabbing and, and just letting the body do what it's got to do. Yeah, so, no. So yeah, from there, it was just a waiting game and just working hard to get back faster than the predicted time that they said. Yeah, exactly. And it was in August, I believe, the 20, around the 25th of August, I think, around about that time. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, whenever the, uh, whenever All In Weekend was. Yeah, it was. That was the weekend I... <laughs> so you, you, I hate saying this on the show because I've said it enough times, but you returned from injury and I suffered heart failure. So that was a very... <laughs> that did you? Was, I did, yeah. It literally, the week before All In, 
I was, oh my god i was on a holiday at my family's in in cornwall um and i suffered uh yeah my heart my blood pressure was 236 over 138 <clears throat> the uh the the consultant said uh, um <laughs> they said i don't know how you've walked in the room which was, oh my word yeah so that was a, a bit of a scary one thing so i missed all in uh last year funnily enough uh i won't be yeah yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh bless you i'm just glad i'm just glad you're all right that could have could have gone another they way they said but... Another, if I had not gone into the hospital when I did by Tuesday, I probably would have been dead. That's yeah. that's insane. That's the yeah, reality that's of the situation. But this week, this week, uh, I got signed off from the heart failure clinic, so they're all happy. So that's oh, uh, congrats. Good. Well done. Yeah, thanks for that. But anyway, not enough about me. I don't want to talk about me. It's about you. Um, you come back, you rehabbed. 24. Now your finisher, the car driver, is a modified tombstone in a lot of ways. You do a jumping tombstone power driver. Now, back from a broken leg. And having to hit that move, do you sort of think when when you've got the guy up and you're thinking, right, I've got to do this, mindful that you've broken your leg, are you sort of kind of thinking, shit, I hope this goes all right? No, no, no. not at all. Um, no, I wouldn't have let myself get back in the ring if I wasn't able to do everything that I was able to do before. I, I wouldn't have put the the stress and the the fear of myself because I got I got signed off from the hospital. I think at the end of no start of July is when I got signed off from the hospital. Yeah. So yeah. I I could have gone back then. It would have been, in my opinion, silly to do so. But but I could have. I my bone was healed, and they said, you know, you can start going back to whatever you were doing. But I just wanted that time between from July to the end of August to be like, okay, let me get in a ring for just under two months. Uh, and just literally relearn how to wrestle, make sure that I can do everything that I did before. Because uh, I think with an injury, uh, and I think a lot of people would agree with this, you, your your body heals a lot faster than the mental side of it. Yeah. Uh, going forward and being like, huh, I feel like, yeah, I could do all this, do all this. And then you're in a match and the reality is like, you start to go, well, I don't want to do this in case it slips up. And then when you do it, you're you're actually fine, to be fair. But your your brain second guesses itself a lot. So I wanted that period of time to try and get over that that mental block. And it probably took me the rest of 2023 to to fully get over it with a lot of stuff. Like I changed a lot of bits going forward just that I could yeah. go and do a match that I knew would be good, but I knew I'd be like, I'm not going to worry about it. And then I would do maybe one, <clears throat> excuse me, one match where I'd be like, okay, cool. Um, I've got to avoid my opponent by backflipping over them and landing on my feet. That's good. Okay, well, I haven't done it for a while. We'll see. Let's hope. And then it's been fine. And be like, cool, tick. That's another thing done. Uh, so, and you, that's that's kind of just how it's got past. I think. So it's kind of like a, also like a gradual process with some of the moves that you would do before. Maybe let's let's not do it in the first couple of one, then but move get ready and in the yeah. with the fourth match back. Right, we're going to try this one now. Tick it off. Yeah, the absolutely. Move on. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, from what I saw of you in 2023, which was the back end, uh, very, very good. Loved most of your matches. I think you was at Jurassic as well at the back end of 20s. I'm pretty sure. Yes, you had. Yes, a, yes, yeah. you did. Yeah, I got a point. Yeah, you're the one that come up to me at the end of your match and giving it large. But actually, yeah, well, yeah. Well, you were giving it math to me, so yeah, I didn't know who you were at that point. So I just thought you were some other ignorant person from Ipswich. So I don't, no. I don't, I don't care. Don't care who you are, wherever you're at. If you're going to give it math, you better be able to take it. That's right, uh, I, and I did, and so did you. To be fair, no, I'm not from Ipswich. Or, I'm in Essex, but not not in Harwich, uh, for sure. There we go. For sure. Um, and yes, I saw you there, and obviously you return, you returned to ignite to uh, uh, stop the beat down from from Mark True that he was giving uh, Nino at the end. Obviously, put him out of the of the last ignite show um, when mm. you beat Mark True as well. But funnily enough, you and True will meet again on the 16th of March. Uh, for yes. Some- the Premacy Championship Wrestling's debut, the, the heavyweight championship match, the main event, yourself, Mark, and Levi Muir are going at mm. it. Um, two very different cats in, in the ring with you at this point. You've got the powerhouse of Levi Muir versus kind of Mark True, who can pretty much, you know, as much as I hate to say it, do pretty much anything uh, in mm-hmm. the ring, although is a is not as the, hasn't got the stature of Levi. So how are you going to prepare for that one? And also, main event, the company's first show. How proud does that make you feel that you've been selected to do that? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's very cool. Um, yeah, I, I like what I've seen from what they've put out um, at the moment with their, all their graphics are very professional. The guy whose promotion it is is 
uh, a wicked guy and I really hope that it goes well uh, for him and I will try my best to make sure that it's a successful main event and everything. Um, as to the other two guys in there, I've wrestled both of them. Uh, I beat Levi before and I believe Mark and Mia won one apiece in different promotions. Um, so I know what it is to to beat both of them. Uh, the, the difficult thing about it is that they are very good jack of all trade wrestlers mm-hmm. so like obviously the, 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 you write in the statue like no one looks like levi and um in his size but levi is also deceivingly fast as mm-hmm. mark is also deceivingly strong um so it's very hard to kind of prepare for like oh this one's fast this one's strong uh i think the more the fact i've got to do is just that i know how i beat levi before i know how i beat mark before and just try and use that same mindset going forward into the match and then trying to predict and preempt if they're trying to counter what I beat them with before. That's what I got to be aware of. And if I can do that, I reckon I'll come up on top. Exactly that. And we we may be done that show. I'll have to find out. I'll have to speak to the promoter as well. We, we may be getting down to London to watch that one. But we'll we'll come back to shows in a minute because you are very busy and we've got a couple of shows that we will be at that you'll be at, that you'll be wrestling in uh, shortly. But let's go back, back, back. I think you've got a new Japan shirt on there, if I'm right. I do, yes. A quick one before that, because it was announced, uh, well, announced last week, uh, Akada leaving New Japan. Yeah. Yes, Surprise? I've just seen... I literally just saw that this morning, actually. Mm. Um, I don't know when it was announced, but I only just kind of saw about it this morning. Um, yes and no, <clears throat> in surprise. Um, I think it's more of a surprise that it's it's going to be the first time in New Japan like that I will be watching New Japan without Okada there. Mm. Like I feel like he only took a little bit of time off for a back injury at one point, and otherwise he's been there since I've been watching it. Um, so it's going to feel really odd in that aspect, but he is like one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I do think, even though everyone knows him, I think a global American stage, uh, is where he deserves to be. I mean, he's probably in his prime at the moment, maybe just coming slightly, not after his prime, but maybe just, just off the peak. He's about 36 now. So. It's hard to say, like with with wrestling, like your prime could be anywhere between like twenty and forty, yeah. uh, sometimes even forty. Um, but yeah, I think it's just good for him now to be hopefully displayed on a on a, a really prominent global stage, uh, because he's definitely deserves it and earned it, and he's good enough to hang with everyone that's on there. I'm just interested to see who will pick him up. Yeah, that is an interesting one because obviously his contract ends at the end of January. There is obviously a very interesting event coming up, the, I think, the week before the end of January, uh, which would be the Royal Rumble, um, mm. which, you know, that, so this kind of rules him out of that just because contractually wouldn't be possible. Um, right, yeah. But does he fit? We talk about when you say wrestlers fit molds and stuff like that. Is he more of an eight? Would you say he's more of like a TNA? Because he'd come back to TNA as well uh, he's with, with mm. the machine guns. Um, did he, does he kind of fit more that side of it to the WWE? Because WWE is a lot more about presentation and maybe more about character. Whereas the other two, AEW, TNA, and even, even, even NWA to a degree, is very much more wrestling based. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. I think, um, I think as a presentation from imagery, he could go anywhere. And I think WWE as well, he, like I just think of some of the stuff that he's done uh, with his image and his entrances and like the uh, the, like the thing he did at the last Wrestle Kingdom with the the UV coat that he yeah. did where he, uh, that was amazing. And he's always had this big lavish, um, like money themed entrances. I think that on a WWE stage would be excellent. But um, I think he's, he, the obviously the issue of him being a Japanese speaking wrestler uh they WWE love to have people cut a lot of promos a lot of talk yeah. time um and that's not the fact that they won't use you if not but you can kind of look at it at like how big a deal Shinsuke was yeah when he was brought over and he's still used well but he's never quite got to that that peak mm. um as he was in Japan just and I think mainly just because of the difficulty translating to a glo- uh, a more global audience. And I think that'll be the same with Okada. Um, you could obviously stick them down in NXT where they don't need to worry about it so much, but they're, but Okada way too big for an NXT stage, in my opinion. <laughs> so uh, I believe for that, it will be the AEW or TNA. And also they can run, like, they can keep running the Danielson line if they want to. They can run, they can tease Omega, Okada again. 
Um, there is the TNA link, maybe. Uh, they might have him as an investment because obviously they're rebuilding and they're putting a lot of money into bringing people in. So I think AEW or TNA. Yeah. I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him in WWE because I think that is what he deserves. But yeah. I do think he will be better for him and for the promotion, and it will be more less of an adjustment for him on AEW and TNA. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. But uh, let's get back to some cool saying you growing up more so than New Japan, and you'll probably mention that a bit more, and we'll talk a bit more about New Japan after because there's a couple of other bits and pieces. When you were growing up watching wrestling, what was you watching, and what got you intrigued as, as wrestling as a whole? Um, so, yeah, I think it was more I, I wanted to watch wrestling because uh, my parents didn't want me to watch it, so it was sort of that forbidden fruit type thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you when you when you're not allowed to do or see something as a kid, you, you're the rebellious side of you obviously wants to go and in, in the opposite way and do or see it more. So uh, I would go to like my friend's house uh, to like go and watch it. Uh, but, but I had no idea who anyone was because I wasn't watching it often enough. I would just come and watch a bit, forget the names of the people, forget what they look like. Uh, and that was probably in about like 2000 and I don't know, like four or five, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it became too difficult to, to keep up so i dropped off it for a while and then uh i think i went through school and i finished i started watching it again maybe maybe around six form so that would have been maybe about 2012 2013 i think mm -hmm. uh around that time uh i can't remember what was even happening there i think it was like i don't think it was very good years of wwe <laughs> oh, it wasn't <laughs> yeah um uh, but i i a lot of people say it wasn't, but I, I thought it was all right. I liked it because I, I guess I didn't know what was before. So I was like, this is cool. This is nice. And then a little bit after I had a friend there who who knew about like, you know, TNA, old TNA and uh, Japanese wrestling and Ring of Honor and things like that. And I'd only ever known about WWE. So he started showing me those. I was like, oh, wow, this is like a completely different thing. Like, that you know, that no one moves like these people do. Uh, so I got really into that, watched a lot of that. Um and then eventually started watching older WWE stuff once the network became a thing. Yeah, and I was like, "Whoa, it used it used to be really good, uh, <laughs> and it's and, it, and it's now got back to a good bit." But I think the bit where I came and tried to start watching it in that 2013 was a bit of a down period. I was just thought it was it was okay at that point, uh, but either side of it, it was it was really good. Um, so yeah, I guess yeah, a bit of a dull story, but that's that's about it really of how I got into it. That's good. Do you find that you prefer that more strong style wrestling as towards the presentation-based product of WWE? I think I enjoy watching it uh, more. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the kind of style that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't consider myself strong style at all. No. But I do enjoy watching it because I think it's uh, I think it's one of the things that people eat into the most because it's the most legitimately relatable. Um I, relatable is maybe not the the right ter term. Uh, legitimately portrayed, I would say, um, because like sometimes uh, when you're they're taking a hit and it's not affecting them, sometimes sometimes that wouldn't affect you if you're in a in a, in a actual like boxing fight. Sometimes a glancing blow wouldn't get you, rather than like if the rock throws a punch and it was always like ah this big reaction. Like sometimes that's not authentic. Um, and I just always enjoyed sometimes the simplicity of Japanese wrestling, which was just hitting each other and then throwing someone on like uh, with a suplex. And that would be what brings them down because, you know, you can't relate to being thrown on your, on your back or anything like that. That looks like it would hurt. So I quite like the simplicity of it, but I think my, uh, I, I quite like technical wrestling as, as like yeah. a, my thing. Uh, so like any kind of like old world of sport uh, type stuff. I like, uh, I like ZSJ, Brian, uh, Gresham, like any uh, any of those, that kind of level where it's the the grappling side of it. Um, old older names being like the Malenko, Regal. Yeah. Like I, I like that that kind of level, that side of wrestling the most. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm a big fan of that. and a big fan. Of, you are. I'm, I'm a big fan of strong style, but a big fan of technical as well. That's a that's where it does it for me. Um, do you have a, a favorite? Uh, this is a question that we ask quite a lot of people that we have on, and some of them answer it easily, and some people don't. But do you have a favorite wrestling entrance music from your time watching wrestling? Uh, I'm going to be on in the camp of probably not an easy, not an easy answer. Um, 
I think it's edges. I think it has to be edge. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just so singable. Yeah. It's uh, it's so singable, and it's so. It, it just hits all the right spots and it just builds and builds and builds and builds to that crescendo. Um, and it just feels like, I remember it when he returned at the Rumble. Yeah. Hearing that. And I'll never forget, sort of like forget that moment. Just a, a bunch of us were in a, uh, was in someone's house watching it and he came in and we all obviously freaked out like everyone. But then everyone was just singing that entrance. And then in uh, Cardiff when he was there. Yes and everyone was singing that like when you've got like a song like that that everyone's singing and it's been the same for however long he's been using it since like i don't know 2005 or something like that he's been using it i yeah, think exactly. yeah roughly so like nearly 20 years and pe people were still singing it and it still gets people like yeah like that i think that's the best entrance music yeah agreed it was it's the one that quite a lot of people say I i've got it on yeah it's definitely one of mine that that's for sure mm. I i'm an edge head as they would say yeah, uh, as I would say back in the day, but let let's re talk about you uh, now and you as in now the future, now the the present, shall we say? Um, you've got a match coming up at Ignite, so we're going to be there as well because our, our our championship is going to be defended. But you are in a number one contenders match at Ignite uh, with Corey McRae and Team Buckle, one of Team Buckle's sponsors, a uh, Luna Blue. Interesting one, intergender triple threat. Again, mm -hmm. two different types of opponents. Corey does the strong style stuff, and he's mm -hmm. a bit, and he's a good technician as well. With a Luna, you've got more of a high flyer. So again, it goes back to kind of what we were talking about with Levi and Mark, but just again, two totally different cats with totally different styles. And then there's the Maverick himself. Again, is it going to be? And do you find triple threat matches? There's kind of like you have to put your head on the swivel a little bit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Especially when it's uh, like you say, so many different styles as well. Uh, you've got to be prepared for literally uh, any assault from any position. Uh, you always think that you might have got rid of someone and then they ha you're, they're they not as hurt as you might think they are. So then they're back on you. It's so hard to get a victory thinking of the other person that's in there, uh, I find. And I've been in a triple threat with Corey before and he just doesn't go away. <laughs> uh, we we have one at Ignite with uh, me, him, and uh, Nino, and I would I think I had Nino beat to be fair, um, and Corey chucked me off, and then I hate to say it, Nino would have pinned me at the end of the match, but Corey again came back, chucked Nino off, and pinned me. So Corey's just one of those oh, he's. He just doesn't go away. And so I'm really prepared for that this time mm. in the triple threat match. Um, Aluna uh, is a good friend. And I very like have a lot of respect for how much graft she's put in in the last year. Uh, I think she's the pedestal of hard work in 2023 of how much she went around and how much work she did uh, to get herself seen and noticed. And it definitely worked. Um, and like you say, she's a good high flyer. She's got some good offense, but I don't think it's her time yet. I think Corey's had his time. I think it's my time. I think 2024 is the year last year for me that was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that year, I think this year is that year. So in China, you know, when they say it's the year of the pig, it's, it's the year of the Maverick. Yeah, absolutely. 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 If, if you were to get past uh, Corey and Aluna, and as long as he gets past his uh, opponent, Jay Joshua, at Ignite, you could run into another one of Team Buckle's uh, 2024s, uh, Mr. Adonis Payne. And he's been get, making a name for himself as well across the British scene right now. Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's, a, he's again, he's a hard worker. He's a, got a bit of a snotty attitude at Ignite, I must admit. I don't know why. I don't know, maybe because it took him so long to get booked. But uh, but he's the champion now, so I don't know why he's still salty. But either way, um, yeah, I mean, I'll face Adonis. I'll face Jay Joshua. Um, I've had run-ins with both of them. I've, I've beat Adonis before. I've been in scrambles and stuff. I've not had a one-on-one -on -one with JJ, but we've traded blows in different multi-man matches before. So I'll wrestle either of them and, yeah, 
whoever's got the championship, they need to hold on to it tight because I don't think they're going to have it for very long. Maybe not. Certainly, certainly be interesting to see on the 4th of February. There's only about 15 tickets left, by the way, for Ignite. So if you haven't... Oh, beautiful. Get down there because obviously our championship will be defended as well. Mike's next opponent. I feel as if the title's cursed. Every time we've put a match out there, we've had to get it changed. Yeah. I was um, speaking I was speaking to Mike about this the other day. I was like, you just can't hold down an opponent, can you? No. We was meant to have uh, Ridge right at first. Then we had to replace him with Will Cruz. Then we was meant to have Derice this time. But we replaced him, I think, very, very reasonably this time with Eddie yeah. Dennis. So that should be... Uh, uh, an interesting one. But yeah, hopefully we don't have any more of these uh, issues with the uh, title. But uh, speaking of which, if you have an option of, say, you know, you you got to have a, a match at any promotion with anyone on the British scene and you could choose the opponent, who would you, who would your dream opponent be right now? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, I don't know. There's a lot of good wrestlers at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't think a promotion. I can't really say because there's there's, no, there's a lot of promotions yeah. I'd like to get to. Uh, any any of the top ones would be nice. Um, I guess, but I, I suppose opponent. There's there's loads. That I'll I'll start, I'll start by saying there's a, there's loads I would love to wrestle. But uh, and this isn't the most person I'd like to wrestle most. He's just one that I know I've got really good reasons to, and that'd be Dean Ormark. Okay. Um, just because he's. Uh, one of the, probably the most innovative wrestler I think in the past 20 years like you see his work um in so many wrestlers stuff mm -hmm. that have that have uh borrowed and stolen uh respectfully stolen from uh and hopefully accredited to Dean um he's just excellent and I really want to get him before he wraps it in I don't know how long he he'll be going maybe he'll be going for a while and it'll be no issue and we'll we'll cross but I uh I spoke to him a while ago and he, he said he was maybe maybe thinking in the, in the next few years. But again, that, that might be because he was really knocked up at the time, mm -hmm. uh, banged up at the time. He might be fine now. He might want to, he might want to carry on. I have no idea. But um, he still looks like he's going very strong. So hopefully um, it's a possibility. But yeah, and there's uh, just a love of his work and a love of technical wrestling. Uh, I'd very much love to wrestle Dean somewhere. That would be interesting, promoters. You've just heard it yourself there. Tommy and Dean, all Mark, please. Uh, uh, CJ Carter, if you're listening, perhaps um, you, you could book that for a, a future Ignite show. Um, Tommy, before we start wrapping up, you've got your calendar. I know I've read off a few of your book in a few of your matches that you've got coming up. Is there any more that, you'd like, that you can know off the top of your head that you want to add right now? Uh, yeah. So yeah. at the end of the uh, month, there is uh, Wrestle Carnival, uh, which is uh i'll be doing the celebration of pure wrestling yes. which is kind of the, the, the second show that's going on there i've got a pure wrestling contest versus sam bailey mm -hmm. which will be very fun uh, i like to do uh, a pure rules match now and then uh it's a, an interesting stipulation to work with and sam's a great wrestler and i think we'll have a uh, a good portray on a good demonstration of technical and pure wrestling so that'll be interesting and then um yeah february is like you said ignite which I'm looking very much looking forward to. And that card is stacked just yeah. so if you can get to Ignite with the last 15 tickets. Um, no coincidence that the three I've been back, they've started to nearly sell out, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yes, the shows are great. Uh, you guys do a great job. CJ does a great job. Yeah. Uh, and the wrestlers do a great job. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of the strongest promotions, I think, uh, this way of the country. Uh, and then, yeah, Jurassic Pro... Um, which is the following week, I believe, on the 11th. 11th I might be wrong. Yeah. yeah, I'm right. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll be taking Forrest Hayes' championship. Um, I'm just taking championships this year, man. <laughs> that's that's the plan. Like, I I, I feel like, because um, obviously I was out 2023, people have been like, yeah, I guess, you know, uh, we'll give Tommy that rub, I suppose, which is lovely, but you, you can't give me that opening when <laughs> I'm, when I'm healed, because I will just take your belts. Like people, I'm very happy to like just beat whoever, beat the good people, or beat uh, and earn a pain check or whatever. But if you give me title opportunities, I'm just going to take your titles. And I'm in four main events for four promotions titles, so I'm going to be holding four belts soon. The Ma the Maverick belt collector. You could. That's it. That. That's yeah. it. 
could call yourself. But yeah, you got Jurassic on the eleventh. Yep, that was a they're strikes they're striking back uh, this mm-hmm. year as well. So that would be that would be a good yes. that would be a great match as well. Yes. By the way, so that'd be good. Any others that you can think of that you know about that you can say or the rest? Can't say any. Can't say any more. There's the SCW one that's, yes. that's been announced. Not I can't sure. say. I can't say the others. I'm afraid. No, um, no, no. absolutely. But uh, and then uh, the other places you can see me for um, February is I've got a couple of WrestleCore states uh, up and down the country that are on their website, which is on the 18th and 25th. Uh, which I'll be at WrestleForce, which is fun because we love WrestleForce and we like the WrestleForce boys. We do, we do indeed. And if anyone wants to book you, where can they get hold of you? <clears throat> uh, you can grab me on uh, Instagram at tkyle01. Uh, you can grab me at Twitter uh, or, or X as it's called now, yeah. uh, tommykyle95. And my Booking email is tommykylehighclub at gmail.com, which is available to find on all the socials. Exactly that. And make sure you do book him up. We want to see a nice full calendar. Not that there won't be any way uh, for you, but we want to make sure your calendar is stacked uh, for the year. So please do get booking Tommy Kyle for certain. I'm going to reel off now so you can take a, a bit of a breather before we, we sign off. Uh, so just be prepared. Um, Team Buckle 2024 this year is uh, the lovely Aluna Blue. It is the Odyssey, Adonis Payne and Artemis. It is L.A. Taylor and it's also Taylor James. So we have to make sure those two names don't get confused so much. But that is Team Buckle 2024. Uh, we will be seeing them very soon. Actually, all at Ignite on the fourth. We've already we've already covered that off. Um, guests coming up soon. Obviously, we've got Jay Joshua ahead of his match with Adonis Payne. Uh, I know I've not Adonis isn't very happy that I'm interviewing him. Apparently, I don't quite know why, but he isn't. Um, we've got the NWA Television Champion uh, Big Strong Mims coming on as well. Actually, a little bit later on today, funnily enough. Uh, so I mean, he's, he's coming on later on today. The wonderful Francesca Oliver from uh, Rev Pro will be coming on for Ringside View as well. And then, as we start February, uh, just after Ignite, we'll be talking to one Alex Windsor. Uh, will be joining the show at Ignite as well. You will hear an announcement announcement from myself and CJ Carter, which will be a very interesting announcement. Uh, Again, can't say too much more, um, but you may have seen or read about this before. And then there is another major announcement that I cannot discuss yet because contracts are not quite signed as of this interview anyway. But apart from that, Tommy, thank you so much for your time. I will see you on the 4th. Yes, sir. Uh, in Ignite. I look forward to that very well. But make sure you check Tommy Carl out at 21st at Sacrifice Pro Wrestling. If you're not got a ticket for that, get one. If you haven't got a ticket for Ignite, get one. If you haven't got any tickets for WrestleForce, get one. And if lastly you haven't got a ticket for Sovereign Championship Wrestling, Supremacy Championship Wrestling, sorry, get one. He has been the absolute maverick, Tommy Carl. I have been your host, Adam Cousins. And until next time, everybody, buckle down and stay safe.